Good morning, everybody. On my way to work. It's dark out. Nothing uncommon. Early in the morning. I uh, want to do a little disclaimer on my video here to come. Uh, building this fuel system. I just want to say that uh, I'm not the best. I don't claim to be the best. I don't want to be the best. I'm one of I'm sure there'll be experts pick apart this video and say, oh, this is, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. But I, this is the way that I do it. This is the way that I have done it. It works for me, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I'm not too proud to learn, but in the same sense, I'm really not interested in trying to improve on it. So, hope you enjoy the video. Okay, I've done got the pump tore down. <clears throat> so we're going to the, now the cleanup process before we reassemble. You've got oil galleries and fuel galleries. Fuel, oil, oil, oil. I'm pretty sure that's oil. I'll verify. Uh, take this cover off. Super clean. I'm gonna have to buff the top of that off to uh, make sure that no chance of grit debris, paint chips, or anything gets in there. So, anyway, that's where we're at with this. Seems these plugs here are hard to get out. They're O-ring under the plugs. Uh, most of you probably already know, but if you don't, you can take a hammer and a punch and give her a hard lick. Not real hard, but a good uh, love tap, as I like to call it, and they'll usually come out easier after that. Okay, here's another one. As you can see, it's going to round out. It is not going to come out. Let's see if I can do this. If you all can see that or not. So much easier. So I'm cleaning up the governor side. This is the governor side. Cleaning up the top where the pump goes. Here would be your part number of your housing. Uh, <clears throat> fuel inlet and outlet, 11 sixteenths usually. Most time JIC. <laughs> Seven sixteenths on them. Allen, I'm sorry. Eighth inch pipe. Or not pipe plug. Eighth inch Allen wrench for the O-ring plug on all of these, except this one, and it is three sixteenths Allen. Okay, notice here the fretting. And here the fretting. That's where the pump has been loose at one time and it's chattering against the block. There's, this is where it seals the block. Oil return, oil pressure. This is just a mounting. So uh, this is the camshaft that's in the engine or in the fuel system. And some significant places here. You actually have three cam journals here, here, and here in the housing that's burned, the rest of these are not. This one here, very significant for pinning the pump to top dead center. Okay. This, this will slide off this collar. It's just sitting down on there. We will stack thrust plate, bearing thrust plate on this before it goes in. Okay, so thrust, thrust washer. Okay. 
It's a little messy. I usually use a uh, luber plate, but I ain't got no luber plate, so that's what I'm using. Okay, I give her a little spin there, make sure she turns good. I think I'll take a rag here and uh, kind of wipe the excess off. I don't, I'm a little sloppy, but I don't want it to look like I'm terrible sloppy. Just like I say, it's white lithium grease. Okay, camshaft's ready to go in. Okay, it's in there. It's only gonna stay in there though, until I put the back half on. There'll be a thrust washer and plates go on here also. And a housing, this housing here. Only we'll probably got a new one that was war time. Okay, we're getting ready to build this uh, back half of the fuel system camshaft assembly. Okay, as you can see here, I put on my rear race bearing and inner race the same as we did on the front only it's smaller it's for the back thrust thrust bearing thrust washers they call them okay i want to point out some significance to this style carrier see this little tit sticking up here it has them there there and there okay the old ones did not have this this is kind of a fail safe so as these flyweights would wear and they would kick out once they wore through the the bearing race here if they kicked out this would stop them before that they would kick all the way out and the engine would run away so that was the purpose in cat adding these okay the dowels which go through these hold them into there they are the same part number as the ones in the time in advance flyweight. So there'll be four used here, four used in the time in advance. I always like to replace them because it's a wear item. Okay, all this is held together and held in by the bolts. When that bolt is in there, let me show you here if I can. That will not let it pass through. I can pull the boat out. And it will. So the boat secures them in place. Okay. <clears throat> so. I'm going to assemble this. And then we will bolt it on back here. And that will secure the camshaft from walking in and out. It'll secure it in there. Okay. This can be a little confusing, but I'll try to break it down. This is a new tack shaft. These get wore. There's a bearing that rides in here. The old engines use the manual tack cable that would be driven here off this. The newer engines don't use that. Okay, there is a small dowel that holds this in here. Which I'll have to hunt the dowel up in my parts. See there, it'll slide through, the dowel go in there, and it's got a recess for the dowel to sit in. Holds it in place. This is the old tack shaft. There are some very small keepers on this. What we have to do is put the small keeper first one on. Then use the spring seat spring. I have a new bearing here, so we will not reuse this bearing. Compress it down 
put another little small keeper on. They ain't big as a minute. You, they're really hard to see. Let me back out a little bit. So we build that, and that bearing here actually sits inside this housing. Okay, that helps support it. I think I got that right. Let me look. Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> okay. So, I'm, I'm trying to break it down a little bit to where it'll be easier to understand, but as I go together, you'll see. So, right now, I got to work on getting these old clips off because I need this spring and retainer, and I've got new clips to put back. Okay, let me try to explain this. Tack shaft, manual tack, drives here. This bearing supports this shaft. It goes in the back of the, go of the uh, governor housing. It sets in a tube. This is a spring and two seats. It's got the small clips. This piece, it runs through. This is the seat for your <clears throat> RPM spring. right here remember this number 8m as in Murray 9141 that is a good all around RPM spring okay that sits down into this other piece okay this is your flyweight races and bearing you got a race it's more or less two washers and a needle bearing in the center. And your fly weights, I showed you them earlier. They're pinned in here with these dowels into the carrier. On the back side of the carrier, your tack shaft goes through. If you can see, that's turned, it needs to be turned. See the dial? It sits in that little groove just like so. Okay. So, what happens? See that? The centrifugal force opens this, moves this up, etc., etc. 